guys, welcome back to the writing vlog. We are now starting March and I am just about to start writing for the month now. For the month. Um, so what you may or may not know from last month's writing vlog, if you watched that, if you didn't then it's on my channel. Um, it's gone really bright now. I don't know what's happening. There we go. So I actually took the last sort of five or so days off of February from writing, which isn't like a big deal, but I've done that thing where now it's going to be really hard to get back into it. Um, but I needed to do it because I just needed that rest so bad. I'm still really, really exhausted. Like my eyes are just really, really tired. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be doing some writing and yeah, thought I'd take you guys along with me because that's what we do. If you watched last month's vlog, I now have my little teapot back, which I'm very, very happy about. So let's have some tea and get writing how big I still can't get over how big this book actually is it is just huge it is huge um so a few weeks ago maybe like a week ago my mum got me actually I think it was a week ago uh, my mum got me this coffee table and it's really good because it does actually lift up um I can't lift it up with one hand but I'm gonna do that and see if I can sit on the sofa um it's my coaster just there um sit on the sofa and like write so it's kind of like a little almost like a little desk thing so let's see Let's see how this goes. Oh God, this is really awkward. Ow. Okay. So I've just stopped writing and I was feeling a little bit like deflated because I didn't feel like I'd actually done very much. And I just checked the writing tracker and I've actually done 1,100 words. So I'm really happy with that. Um, so I think I'm going to take a break. Um, I'm probably going to watch some Buffy because I've been re-watching Buffy. Um, I was actually going to re-watch Buffy anyway because I was just in the mood for it. And then um, the Slay Along started um, on Twitter, which if you don't know what that is, just hashtag Slay Along and you'll find all the info. Time for a little writing session. Look who's finally charged her headphones. Everyone look at me, I'm so cute. So it's currently about 10 o'clock at night on a Monday the 4th of March and I am just about to start doing some writing. Now, like I mentioned in last month's vlog, this is something that I've been very, very conscious of trying to avoid, but it's one of those things where like, I don't want it to be that my automatic go-to time to write is like late in the evening. Um, because that's something that is not helpful for my chronic fatigue, um, etc, etc. I've gone through this like before, um, so I won't go through it again. But it is one of those things where like, you also have to listen to your body when you have a chronic illness because like today, for example, I woke up um, about midday, which is typically common for me because of like my illness and medications and all that sort of stuff. And like, by the time I actually felt human, by the time I could sit and talk like this, et cetera, et cetera, it was like six o'clock at night and I didn't feel like I was functioning until six o'clock and now I feel like my body or my brain is finally awake and the, the fog is clear it's 10 o'clock at night and I'm like well I don't want to be settling down to go to bed because I feel like I've just woken up in my head so um I am going to do some writing um and we'll see how it goes um so yeah that's what's going to happen I kind of wanted to just um talk a little bit about my process that I'm going through at the moment with these um revisions because I found something that really seems to work for me and that is I work solidly on a chapter for however many days it is at the moment it's working out about three to four days um of work per chapter and then what I'm doing is and I work through that like section by section but then sometimes I'll look at something and go oh actually that conversation should happen earlier and I'll keep going back keep going back redoing it repolishing it well not repolishing it but doing that and then later on I polish it which is what I was gonna say and then got caught up on my words um so what I tend to do is once I feel like the scene has everything that it should have everything is in its place things that are supposed to be happening are supposed to be happening and I think yes that scene is done I then leave it for like a day and then go back and give it a polish and it's really interesting how much it's changing because I read the first sentence um and straight away I was like well those those words would be better if they were the other way around and it just comes to me like so much quicker so I think that's a really good way that it's working for me is kind of like just work on the chapter over and over keep going um rejigging it then leaving it and then going back for like a little bit of a polish um and then move on to the next one and do the same thing so that's what i'm gonna do um like i said it's about 10 o'clock at night so we'll see what happens um i've got some tea i've got some mints got music got pajamas on let's just do it 
So I've worked on it for about two hours. Um, it didn't feel like that, but that's how much time went past. Um, I've now got the typical rashes appearing on my face because my body's like, why are you doing this to me? Um, and I have a really bad stomach ache, which I don't think is connected, although it might be because bodies are weird and my body just can't handle like any exertion. So if I've like done mental exertion, sometimes I'll like my body will get like a stomach ache and all sorts. It's, it's weird. Um, so I think this is my body's way of saying to me, like, look, just stop. Um, so I'm going to stop now and I'm going to go to bed and carry on reading A Curse So Dark and Lonely because I'm really enjoying it. By the time um, this video is up, I should have a review up. So if you're interested in finding out about that book, go check that out. Um, but I'm really enjoying it. So yeah, it's definitely time to cozy up, go to bed, um, finish off that book and maybe have a peppermint tea. And fingers crossed, I will wake up tomorrow feeling a little more um, better. I've just remembered that I got this book out from the library the other day and it's good fairies bad fairies and I don't really need this to be entirely honest with you um I don't really need it because I have done nearly all my research but every now and again even though I've done my research I like to kind of just refresh my memory because there are little things that you can like you know weave in um little bits of dialogue stuff like that and I'm actually working on a short story project at the moment for something else so I kind of just want to brush up brush up on my failure uh, before I get started but I'm definitely going to end this now because oh, my stomach is cramping and it hurts so goodbye hey guys so it's Saturday the 9th of March and I'm currently sat in my spare room I haven't been able to sit in my spare room and do any writing pretty much since I moved in because the bed wasn't comfy enough um, but I recently got a new bed this room is really really lovely but it's not quite finished yet so I'm not gonna like show it in all its um in all its glory but I'll give you like a little sneak peek um but yeah the rabbits are currently running around because they're in here at the moment because they can't go outside yet um because they don't have um well first of all because they don't have appropriate like fur coats because they haven't got winter coats yet um because they've been indoors all winter so it's too cold for them to go outside but also um I need to sort things out in my garden so they are currently indoor bunnies and they are loving it um but yeah, they need to have some exercise, they need to run around, so they're having a play and I'm going to be doing some writing. So if you've been watching my channel or following me for a while, you will know that this is Benji, aka Benjamin Bunny. I've had him about two years and this is Willow and Willow I've had only two months. Three months? Two months? I'm not sure, but I haven't had you very long, have I? No, and you are the cutest little thing. As it turns out, that was not a good idea because Willow was just climbing all over me, bless her, and just wanted like constant attention. Um, and also, I am really allergic to my rabbits. Um, couldn't sit in there with them today. He actually made my chest hurt, so back in the lounge. Hello, it is the 25th of March. Oh, it's my brother's birthday. Anyway, uh, it's the 25th of March and I haven't updated this for quite a while. I don't know how it's been. Um, it's definitely been at least a week, it's probably been longer. Um, I have been basically going through um, a weird thing that's just been really hard to kind of get my head around. Basically, I have been working on a short story which is um, going to be part of something that I can't talk about yet, and um, but I will very very soon. And um, it's basically a short story set in the world of my novel now. My novel is technically urban fantasy um, with a very strongly developed fantasy world attached and this story is set in that fantasy world so it's like a high fantasy story, like a high fantasy short story. Um, and at first it was really really difficult for me, I could not think of anything, like I've basically had this um, invitation to be part of a project for months and I haven't committed because or I hadn't committed because I just couldn't think of anything that I wanted to write and then finally it's come to me I'm officially on board um 
and for the last like four or five days I've been writing away so so much like I've, I'm halfway through the short story and I think I only started it on maybe Friday um maybe Thursday I think it was Friday though um so it's going really well I'm really happy with it but it definitely took me quite a while like quite a while to get to a point where I was okay talking about it because even though it's set in my world I haven't I don't write short stories I actually don't particularly like short stories um I don't really like short stories unless they're part of something else and for a long time I felt like I had to write something that was totally different and I had to give myself like I had to think of something completely new and then I realised I don't need to do that it's okay if this story exists out in the world before my novel does because I feel like if people read it and they like it you get a little bit of a hint of what my novel will be about there's no character crossover there's nobody in this short story that will be in my novel but it still has similar themes, it has similar elements, there's essentially a part of my fantasy world lore which I love um, so so much and what I've done is created a story around that explaining how that came to be so it's kind of like a little nugget of history um, explaining how part of the world works as a short story so that's what's going on so it's many many hours later and I've been writing pretty much solidly like throughout the day and into the night to the point where I've given myself a lot of pain in my hands um it's got and my eyelid is like twitching really bad because my brain and my body is like can you just stop please which I, ha I have stopped now um so it went really well today's writing um i am getting closer and closer to the maximum word count for this story and i'm getting a little bit concerned because while i oh my crisps in the background um while i love my story i am very worried that it is coming across as like just constant info dumping of like the law of this world because the whole point is that this is a story set in the world that i have chosen to create but it's like basically a story that shows you why my story is unique and why my world is unique um and that means i have to reveal a lot of information which is fine but it's like is it coming across in a way that's really info dumping and is it coming across in a way that's interesting i don't know um the words started to get weaker the last like couple of hours so I've stopped now um, and hopefully I'll be able to go back to it and do some more tomorrow but my brain is very very tired so I think I'm actually just gonna go to bed now hey guys so I'm gonna be really honest with you it's April the 3rd and I should have finished this writing vlog a few days ago and it should already be up on my channel but Sean from Readers Rambles came to visit and I just forgot that she would be here when I'm usually wrapping it up and I just realized oh I haven't done that so um, I'm just finishing off the vlog today um sorry i'm not perfect far from it um but yeah as far as march goes as a writing month it was pretty good i wrote a lot of words but i didn't do as much on my novel as i wanted because i'm actually currently working on a short story um i can't really tell you too much about it but all i can say is that i'm working on a short story that is set in my fey world and it's a short story that is read completely as a standalone um but what it does is introduce you to the law and the mythology and the world building of like what this world state is that you're going to get a story in in the future um that means that there's a little bit more world building and kind of a lot to take in than your average short story but the thing is I'm someone who likes the idea of short stories in theory but I've just never really enjoyed writing them. Um, my ideas are always too too big um, and too complicated for a short story and I find that as a reader I just don't really, I don't invest a lot of time in them because I can't invest a lot in the characters and I often find that I don't get an attachment to the characters so for me doing the short story it had to be something bigger 
and set in a bigger world than than a short story that existed on its own and it's in like not involved in anything else whereas this is connected to my novel obviously it's not going to be something that people have to read before reading my novel because that would be a very silly decision um <laughs> to make but um yeah it's something that is a complete standalone but in the future it will be a bit of an easter egg um so yeah i'm going to carry on working with that in april um my deadline for the story is april the 15th so um basically half the month is pretty much going to be solely dedicated to that as much as i would like to go back to my novel um i need to just focus on this short story right now so that's what i'm going to be doing um i'm just going to check to see if there was any other questions because last month i asked you guys to um give me some writing questions or just any any questions really related to writing or my project or your own projects um and i think i answered some of them but i might not have answered them all so i'm gonna have a look and see about that and then answer them and then i'm gonna wrap up this vlog um probably seems like i did like that it wasn't a priority from answering them at the last minute but it's just because the month like ran away with me and i actually do really like um getting writing questions so if you're thinking about leaving one then do because i like them one of the questions i got was is your work urban fantasy or full fantasy and honestly it's kind of a mixture of the two because um my work in progress would be considered urban fantasy because it starts in a present day london um and it's a london that is different we know it's different um so everything's not necessarily hidden but it's quite new that's all i can say um everything's changing basically um but there is a hidden world attached and this world is the fey world and this world is very very intricately developed to the point where i have a binder that is hundreds and hundreds of pages long like i have the history i have um the law of the world the mythology what makes this world work and it is big enough to be considered a fantasy world in its own right um but it's connected to an urban fantasy world so the answer to that is it's kind of both another question that i got which i really like was one about um cliffhangers and that was um gen the gist of it is um, if there's going to be a second book, how do you write the perfect in ending to this one? A cliffhanger is a good idea if I was never published. Um, I think a lot of people tend to sort of advise away from cliffhangers, but I think to a certain extent, like you have to leave something for people wanting more. Um, I guess the main thing I would say is don't do a cliffhanger for cliffhanger's sake. You know, um, you want to still have the story have like an arc but then have something that makes people want to go back for more but don't necessarily throw a cliffhanger in as like this will make people want to come back for more it has to feel like organic and real um i have a bit of a cliffhanger in um my my first book and you know if you're not published there is a little bit of a risk with that because you're kind of saying to um an agent or a publisher take a chance on me um but don't just take a chance on me for this one book because there's actually going to be more and i know that from um a lot of writer agent talks and just things that i've been to in the past um the main advice has always been if you can write the first story as almost a standalone that you can build on um and that's great advice and it it makes a lot of sense but it doesn't work for everybody because not all stories can fit in that narrative and i tried for so long to do that i try i went through so many drafts and i honestly think the reason that it ended up being as difficult as it was is because i followed that advice too much and i just couldn't do it because my story world it was too big and i couldn't create like this this standalone that could be developed it just it just wasn't right for me so um a lot of people would say steer away from cliffhangers but i think as long as it's true to the story i don't think it's a problem um but obviously take that with a pinch of salt because i'm not published um and you know in a few years time I might be like why did i say that um but i think i think if i think if you're throwing them in for like the sake of a cliffhanger it's not going to work but um i wouldn't save everything for book two because at the end of the day if you don't you need to give people something to come back to um so you know dropping hints and you know things like that you, you need to make the the first book as, as action-packed as the second one because while a lot of second books can often suffer like because you haven't saved enough the first book could suffer and then people won't know to pick up the second one so i think just always just go with just go with your gut um because at the end of the day by the time you get to the point where you're looking for an agent they'll be able to advise you etc but 
um, at this point I would say just write what feels right to you. So I've got one more that I want to answer and that's about plotting and that is how do you go about plotting your story and how do you decide what scenes to write? Uh, I'm going to answer the plotting one first because plotting is something that um, intimidates a lot of people and it definitely intimidated me and I think the main thing is to never really be 100% done and I know that sounds a bit like backwards advice but I had a very loose plot in 2013 and over the years I've added to it and I've always gone back and kind of tightened things up and even as late as late as like two years ago I went through the entire plot and I reworked it and I think never kind of feel like you have to have everything at once because I think that's a big thing that a lot of people do is that they think well I must have the entire plot before I start writing and for some people that might be true but I think a lot of the time when we're writing we often get plot ideas as well like I was writing a scene once and I just had this moment where I went but what if and I sort of thought about it and I was like that fits perfectly and it fit perfectly in a gap that I had and it was just pure luck um, and it's going to look like it was always there but it wasn't um, so I think plotting is something that it's okay to go back to it's okay to kind of say I'm a plotter and I'm going to plot the whole novel before I sit down to write but also I always kind of go back and look at the plot after every draft because I think that's really important to do because sometimes there's connections that you can make that you might not have thought about before and the more you add things it's a work in progress is kind of what I'm saying so um plotting is can be very intimidating if you think you have to have it all before you start and I think that's often why a lot of people don't get to the point where they're going to start the novel because they're like well I don't have everything yet but I know that if I had tried to write the entire plot and have the entire plot before I started writing I never would have started so um while I am a plotter I'm a re-plotter if that makes sense so I will plot I'll draft then I'll go back again plot draft go back again um and I just tighten it up just keep tightening it up and keep adding these connections that weren't there um adding in bits of backstory like you don't have to have everything before you start and I think that's really important um to know as far as um how do I decide what scenes to write I write chronologically all the time um I go from start to finish but every now and again I will get an idea for a scene and sometimes I just have to write it down so I have a folder in my Scrivener file which is just a random load of mixed scenes um some which will probably never see the live day but some that probably will um and I have scenes between certain characters that are actually um, way, 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 way off in the future. But if I get the idea, I have to write it because otherwise I'll forget. But I literally do a really, really rubbish first draft of that scene. And then I put it in the folder and then I forget about it. And then I go back to writing chronologically. Um, some people don't. Some people don't do that. Um, I think it's really important to write however works for you you know some people write chronologically some people don't um and i think what's important to remember is that what works for one person won't necessarily work for another which is which is what makes writing so fun um but yeah for me i'm i'm a chronological writer which is why i have done the first quarter probably eight times and the rest of it probably three times so that's it for my march writing vlog i hope you enjoyed it if you did please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and leave me a comment let me know um what you enjoyed about this vlog and also just let me know the kind of things that you'd like me to talk about because i feel like i know i said it last month but i feel like the more that these vlogs go on the more they become like a thing that's almost separate to the rest of my channel because you know we're those those of you who watch this you're probably a writer you don't have to be you can just be watching this because you're interested um but i feel like a lot of people who watch these are writers and i like the idea that we can kind of support each other as we're going along this journey so um yeah if you've got any other questions whether it's about like my novel or just about the the process itself or you just want a bit of advice leave them in the comments and then i'll answer them in april's vlog obviously i'm not published I don't 100% know what I'm talking about, um, I think that goes without saying, but at the same time, you know, I still, still have some advice and I know what works for me, so let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you next month. Bye!